Hi there. Um, I want to have a bit of a chat about this AIDS View site, which is just um, this wonderful example of public participation uh, or public information GIS um, that's that I found on the web. Now I can't congratulate the uh, Roland School of Public Health enough for this. The efforts that they've put into this uh, must have just been phenomenal to pull all these data together. And um, you know the way they're presenting it and so forth is just fantastic. For people learning GIS, it does present a, a range of, of issues that uh, you need to be aware of uh, when you're both creating GIS maps and, and interpreting them. Now what we see here is that uh, the data, um, in this case being AIDS, uh, people with, with uh, HIV diagnosis, can be displayed at a number of different scales. It can be displayed at a state scale, a county scale or a city scale. Um, it can be displayed in terms of number of cases and rates per 100,000. Now this is really important and I, that it, what it highlights is it highlights the need to actually look very closely at what, whatever it is you're mapping. Because I, in the, um, the article I wrote about this a uh, couple of weeks ago, I actually got a little, came a little bit unstuck here because I um, compared two maps, one on the basis of cases and the other on the uh, basis of rates. What you notice is that the intervals change depending on the, the interval method, the, the rates. We can see that the maximum rate here is uh, 440 plus when we're looking at state-based data and on a case-based data the maximum value is 135,130 people plus. As geographers you always need to be thinking about you know what may lay behind some of these rates. Um, is it um, or, or the, the, these maps and probably for this sort of mapping you know, the rates it might be a uh, better representation because some areas might be uh, far more urban and have a lot more people in them. You also need to understand what sort of people um, may be in, in different areas uh, and hence probably their determinants of, of health category um, down here. I'm not going to go into that, but it doesn't appear to be related to the um, HIV map, it just appears to be a, uh, a separate map, um, but, but no relationships being drawn between them other than displaying them next to each other. We can look here at male versus female rates, and we see that the um, upper classes, um, upper or the upper range um, changes here between male and female from 490 oh it was must have been another <laughs> it must have been a different uh, a different category where it was doing that that doesn't matter um, when we change the scale here oh the other thing I want to show you is how you can click over these areas and you can gain the actual values that lay behind them. Okay. Now that wasn't for rates, that was for cases that that changed, I think. Male, 16,000. No, it wasn't. Anyway, let's change the scale and we can see um, a whole lot um, different sort of information starting to display. So when we look at these, um, these data um, at, at, a, at a larger scale, as in um, smaller areas, it's a sh think of a ship in a bottle. Um, small scale is a ship in a bottle, large scale is a, um, is a full size ship. Uh, we, we see different patterns starting to emerge. We see clusters um, of similar classes of, um, of data. We can also go to city scale. Okay, so we're looking here at Detroit and we're looking at the cases by zip code and we can see the classes 
Um, when we're comparing um, cases, we're looking at zip codes, uh, we're looking at this, pardon me, well it can't display cases because the data won't allow it. And, and this is good, good stuff they're doing here by um, showing the limitations of the data. The comparison I made incorrectly um, in the article I wrote, I was looking at rates in, um, I think in, in Washington and, case, and cases in, um, in Detroit or, or vice versa. One really interesting thing here that comes through is the, sorry I'll move across here because there's some really good text that shows on, on this one here. In this census tract, so a census tract is a smaller area than a zip code, okay? So you're getting less, you're getting less detail in the, in the zip codes, but sometimes you need to display, um, you need to display this information at different scales when you're presenting different, um, uh, um, different sorts of maps. But the really interesting thing I found here um, when I clicked over this um, census tract was this text, well the text down the bottom of this box that says the value could be inflated because a correctional facility is located in this tract. So it's this understanding and of the um, information that lay behind the theme that you're mapping. And I think that's very important. That's, a, that's, another, um, that's another theme that's going to consistently come through the, the sorts of talks that I give in these videos, is to understand the information you're mapping. Anyhow, that's the AIDS View uh, website. Um, I, I encourage you to explore this. Um, there, there are so many different ways of looking at the data. Um, and uh, it, it's a really, really good educational um, site for people uh, as geographers and, and of course the people in those risk groups of uh, contracting AIDS because one in five people apparently that have the HIV virus don't realise they've got it. So this sort of mapping is very important. Okay, that's it for me for now.